What is going on everybody and welcome to part 7 of the Neural Networks from Scratch tutorial series. In the previous video what we did was the softmax activation function which is what we apply to the output layer of a classifier neural network and of course the next step that everybody wants to do is backpropagation and optimization but before we do backpropagation and optimization what we need to have is some sort of metric for error. How wrong is the model uh, that we're trying to train? The first kind of question or insight that you might have is, well, let's use accuracy. That's what we care about. Why don't we optimize for accuracy? <laughs> so if we only cared about the accuracy of a model, we really would just feed in the binary true or false to an optimizer and make the attempt to optimize the neural network that way. Now, while that's, I suppose, in theory, possible, the problem is we're throwing away a, a lot of, of actually useful information because our neural network doesn't actually output uh, uh, an actual classification. Instead, what it outputs is a probability distribution. So when we pass data into our classifier neural network, the output is a distribution, a confidence score for each of the classes. Now, while we do do a argmax to figure out what is the predicted class, it should be fairly obvious that, imagine you've got the, it predicts the correct class, but one in one instance, it, it predicts with a 87% confidence, and in another instance, maybe it predicts with a 50.2% confidence, right? That's a, 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 there's a difference there, and it would be very helpful if you were the optimizer. <laughs> it would be very helpful to you. That's informative information if you have to go in there and make tweaks to weights and biases. One simple example of a loss function is mean absolute error, which is used with regression. So regression is just where we're trying to output a specific value rather than the probability distribution that we're trying to do in our case. But this should give you an idea of why a loss function is a little more useful than simply doing accuracy. So with mean absolute error, all you're doing is just taking the difference of, you're taking the average of the distances of various points of prediction versus the, the target values. And as you can see, we're just kind of showing some examples here, but as you're more, as you get closer to the correct value, the mean absolute error gets lower and lower and lower. As you get further away, it, it grows. And this is just a, a lot more informative than being right or wrong. So again, rather than doing regression, we're doing classification with a softmax activation function on the output layer. So our model is actually outputting a probability distribution. And then from this distribution, we also know from the training data what was the intended target value. And then from here, we want to come up with some sort of method for determining how wrong is the model. Now, there are many ways that you could theoretically go about doing this, but in general, the loss function of choice for classification, uh, at least classification that's using softmax as the activation function on the output layer, is categorical cross entropy. The formula for which is to take the negative sum and basically what we're passing through to do categorical cross entropy is two probability distributions. So the formula for this is to take the negative sum of the target value multiplied by the log of the predicted value for each of the values in the distribution. So this formula winds up simplifying quite a bit to just being the negative log of the target class's predicted value. And the reason for that is because of one hot encoding. So a couple of things, uh, first off, we will explain one hot coding in just a moment. And then also we'll explain logarithm. If you don't know what a log or logarithm is, don't worry about it. Uh, and then also I'm sure some people are wondering, well, why the heck are we using that confusing formula when there are lots of other, you know, maybe ideas floating around in your head as far as simpler ways to calculate loss there. There are many ways that you can calculate loss. And in fact, many more challenging problems are going to be likely solved by some sort of custom loss function entirely. Um, it just so happens that in classification, this is one of the more popular ones. One, because it's successful, uh, it works. And then two, it actually becomes fairly convenient, if you, if you can believe it. It becomes very convenient in the backpropagation and optimization steps. So uh, more on that when we get there, uh, but that is why. So, um, so first off, the, uh, the first thing I want to explain is what is one-hot encoding. So the idea of one-hot encoding is that you'll have a vector that is n classes long. So however many classes you have, that's how long that vector is. And that vector is filled with zeros, except at the index of the target class where you'll have a one. 
So imagine a scenario, you've got three classes. That means you're gonna have a vector that is three values long. If your label is zero at the zero width index of your one hot vector, you would have a one. And then here are some examples of various numbers of classes, the intended target label, uh, and then the one hot vector that would represent that. Okay, so what's all this about logs? Generally speaking, when someone mentions log without specifying some specific base number, they are referring to the natural log, which also can be referred to as LN, but you'll often just see log, and in programming, just log, and then you know some sort of parameter being passed. When this is the case, this is the natural log, and the natural log is log base E, or Euler's number, which you've already seen, and is somewhat of a hint of why this is a convenient thing for us to use before we do backpropagation. So I've heard that some people in certain studies consider the natural log to be base 10, but those people are wrong. So for the purpose of this series and programming in general, just assume that the log of something means natural log, and that natural log is base E. Okay, let's come down from the clouds for a brief, brief moment and discuss what a log actually is, what does it do, what's it calculating. So a logarithm in general, now obviously you can have different base values, but a logarithm in general is solving uh, for x in the equation of e raised to the x equals b. So the input to your logarithm is actually going to be this b value. So to see this in action, let's, uh, I'm going to follow the exact same example from the book. You can code along if you'd like. You don't have to. You can just watch. And then also you could use your own values and just kind of tinker with it just to get an idea for actually what logarithm is doing. So first of all, we're going to import numpy as np. That's what we're going to use for the actual log part. And what we're going to say is we're going to say b equals 5.2. Again, just using the same value from the book. And we're going to print np.logb. So again, what's, what is this asking? It's asking Euler's number raised to what equals 5.2. And again, Euler's number uh, is something we've covered already. So uh, we'll go ahead and print that. And what we get is this 1.6486 and so on uh, number. Now we can check this. How can we check this? Well, we can quite literally just do Euler's number times uh, this and just make sure it's either 5.2 or very very close. So for Euler's number We're going to import math and then we'll just come down here and let's just print uh, math.e raised to the power of that This output so we can go ahead and run that and sure enough what we get is very close to 5.2 The issue is just a floating point precision issue uh, so um, so yeah that's, that's what a log is and how it works. So now that we have an understanding of the core components of the categorical cross entropy function, let's revisit the formula and how it would be applied to a single sample with three classes where the target label is a zero, which would make the one hot vector one zero zero. And this vector is the distribution that we'd compare to the prediction distribution from the neural network. So again, to calculate this categorical cross entropy, we start by taking the negative sum of the target value times the log of the predicted value for each of the values in the distributions. Now, one thing that should be uh, becoming more clear is that we have a few of these being zero times something plus zero times something else, uh, which winds up essentially doing nothing. And this is why because of the one hot vectors, uh, when we calculate categorical cross entropy with one hot vectors in neural networks, uh, it allows us to actually simplify things quite a bit to just being the negative log of the predicted target class. Because even in that case, the uh, value for the target distribution was a one. So we don't even have to consider it. It's just, it just becomes negative log. So you might wonder, why don't we just call this negative log? Well, first of all, categorical cross entropy just sounds cooler, but also, we are actually doing categorical cross entropy. It just so happens to be the case that it simplifies down to being negative log of the predicted target class value. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and code uh, the, the actual categorical cross entropy solution on an example. 
So I will just clear this out, and we're going to be using the exact example from the book, which is on page 114. Uh, and to start, we are going to import math. We're going to be using math for math.log. In the previous example, I used numpy.log, uh, but we're going to use math.log because this is neural networks from scratch in Python, and numpy is kind of cheating, so this is how we get around that. <laughs> so uh, we'll use math in this example. So first we'll start with a softmax output, and for this we're going to use, and these are just made up values, we're going to say 0 0.7, 0 0.1, and 0 0.2. So what is this? So again, these are just example values that we're making up for the time being, and these are meant to be an example of an output that you might get from the softmax activation function uh, from your output layer of your neural network. <clears throat> and what we want to do is calculate the loss um, on this. So imagine you have an uh, a scenario where the target class was zero. If the target class is zero, what would that make the one hot vector? Well, that would mean the at index zero, it is hot. Otherwise, it's of n class length, which is three. So that would mean our target output uh, distribution would be one, zero, zero. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And now what we want to do is actually calculate the loss. So we're going to say loss is equal to a negative, And then we're going to sum together the math.log of the predicted. So this is going to be softmax output 0. And we're doing it for each of the indices. So it's uh, the math log of uh, softmax output 0 times the target output 0. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add each of these for each index. So paste, whoops, actually, I want to do that. Paste, paste. And then we will edit this in, 1, 2. And then this would be index 1 and 2. So uh, let's remove that plus. And now we can go ahead and print out the loss. So uh, in this case, that is the loss that we got. And if you recall from the animation, uh, one thing to note is in the, in the animation, I think we actually flipped these two things around. It was actually target output times math.log, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, PEMDAS, everybody. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, but another thing you might remember is the zeros. So because we're essentially multiplying these, you know, we've got math.log, and then what is target output at index uh, one? Well, that's a zero. What about this one? Well, that's also a zero. So, so this value zeroes out. <clears throat> this value also zeroes out. What happens here? Um, we do the math log softmax our, uh, output at zero, which is 0 0.7. And then what happens here? Well, it turns out this is one. So it's actually just one times this. So really, this entire formula becomes the same as doing uh, loss equals um, negative math dot log of the softmax output, target class being zero. So let me actually, let's just print print loss. <clears throat> and we should see that we do indeed get the same exact number. So uh, that is how that very complex looking formula becomes as simple as doing this. Now, uh, just for example, uh, let us, um, I think what I'll do is let's just take this and we will print we'll print that. And then rather than passing this, this kind of this, let's just type 0 0.7. So sure enough, we get the exact same value. And then let's say, because this is the target class, let's say instead the prediction was 0 0.5. So what you can see is, and in fact, uh, just to make it abundantly clear to everybody, let's do this. Now you can see that um, so in, in this case, where the, the confidence was higher in the correct class, loss is lower. And then where the confidence gets lower in the correct class, the, the, the loss, this measurement of error, gets higher. So that is our loss function of choice here. That's how it works. That's how it simplifies. Um, in the next video, we're going to be applying this to the actual, you know, the code that we've built up so far. But make sure you have a good grasp on this because as we do that, we're going to be converting it to a class. We're going to be essentially converting uh, because it becomes this, you know, uh, negative log of 
the output at the index of the target class. We're gonna be abstracting that away because we also wanna be doing that in batches. Uh, so as we add the logic to that, if you don't have a firm grasp of what is intended to happen, it can be very confusing <laughs> when we go to write that code. So make sure you have a good idea of what's going on. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, on uh, r r any of that, feel free to leave them below. We also have a Discord server. It's discord.gg slash syntax. You can come in there, hang out, ask questions, all that good stuff. Otherwise, that is it. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the Neural Networks from Scratch book is available. It's on neural network or nnfs.io. Uh, you can get the physical books, uh, hardcover, softcover, or the ebook. So check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, I will see you guys in another video.